So here we are on Sunday the, what day is it there? 7th of August. 7th of August and here's uh, Matthew in the kitchen but here's first of all is the beef and bean cassolette that is one of the meals on the fastnet in our soup bags. Oh, that has got soup on them. <laughs> and here's Matthew. Right. And here's Pinny. Uh, preparing. What are you doing, Matthew? Uh, spaghetti bolognese for ten into two portions. Uh, reduced fat <laughs> with hopefully enough flavour to keep us going through the days ahead. Uh, as Suzanne's already said, seven days from now. Uh, yeah, well, it's 20 to 10, we should, well, we will be on the water, making our way into the start line. Uh, probably an hour before our start, without checking the actual SIs for the race. Um, two years ago, back in 2007, when I just finished Cow's Week, uh, came home, picked up Suzanne, went down to Barton-on-Sea for breakfast, and to watch the previous fast net race go out through the needles. Uh, when Suzanne agreed to do this race with me, I didn't realize what a roller coaster of a ride it was going to be to actually get to here. Uh, the first milestone being last November, we all sat around in this in this room here in this kitchen, eating a bit of grub, setting out our objectives, uh, what we all wanted from this race, just as well as leading the campaign. I've also realised a lot about myself and the, the safety of others. Um, that's been one of our key driving points has been the safety as well as just to com to actually complete the course and that, well, first of all to qualify for it, uh, safety being paramount. And what have we done so far around getting the safety where we want it to be? Uh, first of all I realised uh, through being involved in a, a man overboard situation a few years back that man overboard training is uh, it's very much overlooked by these yacht owners and serious sailors, you know, we, we, we tie the fender onto the bucket, we throw the bucket on and in no way, shape or form does that actually um, perceive the reality of trying to haul the weight of a, a effectively a dead weight of a body, because when, when you fall overboard you lose your energy, blah blah blah, uh, so effectively you're pulling the dead weight of a man in, uh, whether he's alive or not, unconscious. So that was my, that was my first driver make sure that we had actually covered man overboard training good enough so everyone can actually see what's involved with getting the weight on board. Uh, we're lucky enough to be involved with a company called Ruth Lee uh, from North Wales and they, they lent us a doll which I think it actually gave us a reality a reality of uh, pulling this man in. And we, had, we had a good laugh doing it, we spent a good Four or five hours, everyone had to go at the, the, the actual jobs involved, you know, helming, pointing, radio, contact, uh, and actually the recovery of the doll. And yeah, you know, but I think everyone also saw the serious side of it. So once we knew we could recover anyone, should anyone go overboard, then we started to drop, relay more of the safety from external sources, i.e., Commodore Yachting. We've done all of our training with them. Uh, our sea survival course, again, it was a good laugh, we enjoyed doing it as a team, it was a good team builder, but also we all realised, no way, shape or form am I going into this life raft, it's not happening, you know, it is, it is the, uh, it's the last step, you know, the boat has got to be sinking. Uh, someone just texted us there. Um, from there then we've, we've, we've realised that all of the syllabus which was covered in the ISAF Offshore Ocean Safety Course, again with Commodore, most of the boxes we were ticking, you know. That we, 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 we are a safe team. We're, we're quite safe and we're safety and we're safe aware, you know. Um, without having to go through these channels, we, we, we had a fair idea of how to get to the start line and be safe. And uh, what do you think you're expecting out of the Fastnet? Uh, I'm expecting, first of all, some good downwind sailing to start off with. Uh, we've all been, I'm sure, as well as all the other 350 competitors, everyone's been looking at the long range weather forecast for the last three weeks, well certainly from beyond the channel race, and it's going to be downwind sailing uh, from the start line, hopefully. 
Um, we're going to get that for the first couple of days and then I think the rain's going to come in and the conditions are going to die off. It's when the conditions die off and we do get a bit of a light wind, that's when the mental challenge of just trying to keep going forward, where effectively the boat could be going backwards, we could have a bit more tide than wind to drive us, and that's that's the real challenge, uh, the mental challenge, you know, and I think, for me, I, I haven't got very many patients, as a lot of you know, when I see boats going backwards and we've got to start dropping anchors, oh, I'm not an happy chappy. And tell uh, us a little bit about the rest of the crew. Uh, so, going back to the Cows Week 2007, that's where I met uh, Steve Lyne, uh, me and him have become good friends. Uh, I really value his opinion in everything from everyday life uh, to saving. He's a good all round uh, yachtsman. Uh, he's, he's the other watch leader, so I'm the watch leader now on White Watch, and he's the watch leader on Red Watch. Um, the skipper Nick and John Kelly, I met them both sailing on Interceptor. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're competing in this race against us, good friends of ours, the, the, the Wilkie family. Um, who else do we have there? Uh, we have uh, Glynis Wigginton, she came along with Nick. Uh, she's kind of taking this race quite seriously as a, a milestone for a 40th, you know. Um, Paul Foddy and Andrew Hindley. I met them racing against them for the last few seasons at the Hewlett Packard Regatta. We've beaten them. We've been beaten by them more times than we've beat them. Uh, Paul's the navigator on our boat. He does a sterling job of getting us around the course and making sure that we're all fully aware of the tidal gains to be had and missed going inshore and offshore. Um, Jack Pearsman, uh, he was he filled the boots of Ian as Ian dropped out because he couldn't come along anymore. He, for whatever reason, it wasn't uh, his game. Yap stepped in as a, he's a, a colleague, we shall we call him, of Stephen uh, from the IT industry. Yap's, uh, I, I find Yap's, Yap's strength on the crew. He's a damn good downwind helm, you know. He can really hold it up going downwind, and he's very spatially aware. Uh, Karen Felvis, she's she's a good friend of Suzanne and I. Uh, we've been friends for years. So numerous skiing trips and, and lots of sailing adventures in the Solent. Uh, I don't think I've forgotten anybody, have I? Oh, my little wife, the little bear. <laughs> uh, Suzanne, Suzanne's, uh, she's, she's been alongside me all the way through this adventure. Um, and as most as you know, me and her, we have, a, we have quite a good relationship as well as offshore when we're sailing, making sure we're both okay as well, and, and then when we're at home doing this stuff, you know, preparing, preparation, preparation, preparation. That's been one of our mottos for this, the three P's of sailing. Um, so, as Suzanne said, we've got one meal cooked already. We've one in the pan at quarter to ten Sunday morning. We've got another two to do today. Uh, I think one of them's already chosen. We haven't chosen what the fourth one's going to be. And by request, I believe, well, Karen Felvis has been requested to cook her, I, I know it as the Chasney, which is a Glaswegian curry, the Chasney, but because she cooks it, we call it the Chasney, and it changes every time she cooks it. And she's done it once for us, and it went down sterling with, with the taste buds. So everyone's asked for that again. So she's the fifth meal. We're planning for five days at sea. Uh, we'll probably, we do carry some emergency grub should we be there for six days in terms of you know packets of dried pasta and sauce meals that have just had water um, and then I think throughout the day then today Suzanne and I are just preparing more Vitalin doing the calcs on the water and the sweets everyone loves sweets you know the tangfastic fantastics go down um, and I think that's our day laid out yeah that's our day laid out seven days to go and counting down from here eh? maybe we might keep a diary each day of as our feelings change and yeah, we the will do. start kicking in more and it's good, it's good. So that's all from the Hannabys. That's from the Hannabys. <laughs> Until the fastnet. Until the big race, yeah. Here we go. Hey! <laughs>